Welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. My name's uh, Malcolm Thompson. I'm the Vice President of Strategy and Innovation with Nomacork, the proud sponsor of this series of uh, technical seminars that's really focused on the subject of um, oxygen management and, and winemaking. Um, this is the first such event that we had uh, this year. Actually, we had one last year. I was reminded it was almost a full year ago. I'm just curious, maybe by a show of hands, how many uh, of you actually had an opportunity to be with us last March when we did one of these? Okay, okay, so it's 50-50. Anyway, for those that, uh, um, that were, uh, were, were here before, I think you're gonna find we got a lot of uh, new content that you'll find um, interesting and I think useful. And for those that are joining us for the first time, you know, we always do a little bit of repetition. Um, so I think we'll have an opportunity to bring you up to speed and, uh, and hopefully you can uh, join in and won't get lost through this uh, process. Um, we really have a full agenda today and we're going to be time challenged as always. You know, our intent is to get you out of here by 5 o'clock if you join us for a tasting at the end. Um, but I'm just going to jump right in if that's okay. And uh, I'm going to start by providing you with a little bit of background on the Wine Science Forum and what we're trying to do and specifically what we're focused on here uh, today, and then I'll introduce our speakers and we'll get into kind of the heart of the agenda. Okay. Okay, first, just, just by way of background, you know, um, I mentioned Nomacork as, as sponsors for uh, the Wine Science Forum, and really uh, our work in oxygen management started about seven years ago where we began to initiate quite a major uh, research program. Um, and it was really focused on the closure, we're a closure company. And we really wanted to gain understanding on how oxygen ingress through the closure influenced wine chemistry and ultimately the sensory development of wine. And we kind of called this theory we had the translation theory. And the whole, the whole thought process was if we could understand how oxygen um, influenced changes in wine chemistry. And in turn, we understood how those changes in wine chemistry influence the sensory development of the wine. And we can kind of put the two together and figure out what's the right amount of oxygen in order to influence sensory development in an optimum way. And that's, that's kind of how we got started. We actually called it post-bottling chemistry. Um, well, very soon in, it came very evident there's a lot more to the oxygen management story than just the closure. And our research program really expanded significantly. And we really began to focus on um, aspects of oxygen management from really the beginning to the end of the winemaking process. Always an element of closures, um, but still, you know, looking at other factors in combination with the closure and how all that influenced wine development. So through that process, you know, and together with what became a pretty substantial global consortium of academic partners, we amassed a really substantial um, database or library of information that we think is important and useful and information we want to share with the industry. So basically, we established the Wine Science Forum um, just a year ago, just over a year ago. We were always making presentations to the industry. We kind of formalized that with the formation of this Wine Science Forum. And it's our platform really for sharing the knowledge that we've acquired through our research program with you, you know, the wine industry. So in more specific terms, you know, this is, you know, the, let's say our platform for educating the wine industry and the importance of oxygen management. Um, you know, it's really concentrated on winemakers, if you will, so, but also technical people, but it's a very technical form, I think you'll find. Um, and through this, we want to kind of highlight the merits of good oxygen management practice um, and share with you the knowledge and expertise that we've acquired through our research programs over the years. Um, you know, that research was heavily concentrated kind of on fundamental um, understanding. But then over time, as we sort of gained kind of a critical mass of knowledge, we shifted it more and more towards applied research and where we're starting to really focus in on solutions. So it's not sufficient for us to just throw problems out there and say, we got a big problem here. We really need to start direct our attention towards finding solutions to address those problems. Um, we're committed to make this a non-commercial agenda, and I think we've kind of held true to that. It's not to say we're not going to talk about products from time to time because they're integral to the research, but you won't get a heavy sales pitch up here. Um, and um, 
In terms of the involvement, you know, it's sponsored by Nomacork, as I mentioned, but really we have a um, significant participation from academia, and more and more we're reaching out to industry and try to uh, encourage involvement. So our objective is to try to make this more of an industry-wide forum, if you will. Um, and then, of course, the ultimate objective here is to create, you know, awareness for the importance of this particular subject. Uh, if we turn our attention to the U.S., um, you know, the Wine Science Forum initiative for Nomacork is global, so we're doing these kind of seminars in all of our major wine regions. In the U.S., we're kind of trying to take it to the next level. You know, we're sort of taking advantage of the fact that um, the awareness within this country is, is perhaps greater than, than most of our other regions. Um, and so we really want to try to move away from just sharing research findings and moving more into applying those findings um, in a practical sense. And, and as I mentioned, we're trying to see greater industry involvement. Um, so what we did, you know, last year is we formed a council. You know, we call it the Wine Science Forum Advisory Council. And um, we have quite a number of representatives here today. And the purpose of forming that group was, well, to provide some oversight to events like this. And, and you'll find that also a number of the speakers uh, that will be talking today are coming from that group. So it's a source of material and content um, that we want to share back to, uh, with the industry. But one of the interesting aspects of this, and it really relates to this mission of starting to apply what we've learned, is that group is working on collaborative studies. And um, one such study we're going to talk about today, and we're going to kind of present it to you as a proposed study for the wine industry and give you an opportunity to participate. And I'll come back to that uh, momentarily. But, uh, but really, we're going to use this these events like this is a platform for introducing those kinds of studies. And then in subsequent uh, seminars, we'll be reporting back to the group on the findings. So uh, we think that's kind of an interesting uh, development. OK, this is the Wine Science Forum um, Advisory Council. You see we have about 27 members consisting of wineries, a lot of winemakers, but not only winemakers, quality people and R&D people. And, um, also representation from academia, and of course, Nomacork's there. Um, members that are here, just raise your hand. There you go. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for supporting us. OK, so you know, as I said, we've done all this research. And, and kind of what's the bottom line in terms of oxygen management and why we believe this is such an important um, subject that needs to be addressed by the wine industry? Well. As we mentioned, oxygen management is applicable at every step in the winemaking process. You know, in an ideal world, um, in terms of the amount of oxygen introduced at various stages, it would go something like this. And as we like to refer to it, this is kind of the macro stage at must or crush and fer fermentation, and then moving into a micro stage, which could be micro oxygenation itself or barrel aging, and then you get to let's say bottling and post bottling. We're really into a nano stage where the levels should be very low. OK, and then in practice, this is what we, we generally see. You know? And uh, yeah, I joke, it's, it's, it's not scientific. It's just, just an indication, but it's, it's reality, actually, in most cases. No, no offense intended. Um, you know, when you go back here, well, at various steps, you have blending. A lot of this inconsistency, if you will, can be blended off. But as you move to bottling and uh, post-bottle aging, well, um, that's what you're going to see in the bottle. And that can really lead to bottle-to-bottle -bottle inconsistency. So um, initially, and really today, we're focused on this, which is bottling. And uh, we think that that is a significant factor that we should concern ourselves with. And when I talk about this proposed bottling study, or excuse me, this proposed study, it's really going to be uh, focused on that particular subject. So a little bit on bottling. You know, This is just a, a graph. You know, We've done virtually hundreds of bottling line audits um, over the years using our Nomasense um, oxygen analyzer. You know, we measure headspace, which is denoted here in what should be red, which is orange, and dissolved oxygen in blue. And together, we call that total package oxygen. And you can see that, you know, over the years, you know, we've amassed this data, and there's a very significant variation in the amount of TPO we're discovering during this auditing process. And, and to just why is that important? Well, I just try to put it a little bit into perspective in terms of the impact that has on 
wine preservation. If you take a closure we offered that's known as Classic Plus, and you look at its oxygen transfer rate and you kind of annualize that, it contributes about 2.6 parts per million of oxygen per year. And you can see based on this chart, in some cases we're seeing values over 12 and 9 or 10. Well, you know, but on average, we're finding that bottling equates to somewhere between one and three years of wine preservation. So you can say in wines that are turning pretty quick and turning in a year or two, um, you know, the impact of bottling is so profound, let's say, it really doesn't matter what you do in terms of the closure. It's the damage is really done on the bottling line. And I showed this data before, but I just like this chart and it, it kind of, it's the reality of the situation, you know, and this is not our data. This is published by Wines and Vines um, in 2012. And basically it's, it's, it represents 30 of the top selling wines at that time. There's actually 18 bottles of each. Um, and this is just going shopping, buying the wines off the shelf in a retail establishment and conducting an analysis. And in this case, it's just free SO2. And you can see the variation that we're seeing um, virtually across the board, some exceptions, but they really are exceptions to the rule. Uh, and if you could say that SO2 is kind of our best indication of how wine is developing in terms of, let's say, oxidation, you can see there's a lot of consistent inconsistency. And in all likelihood, a lot of this will manifest itself to uh, inconsistency in sensory development as well. Note the, the, you know, the uh, orange line, which really represents kind of the danger zone, particularly with white wines. Anything below 10 ppm, we start to get a little bit concerned the wine is going to show signs about oxidation. So, you know, so yes, we see it on the bottling line, and yes, it continues on to the wine itself, and we're seeing it on the shelf, essentially. So, why bottling? beyond what I've just mentioned. Well, we think it's low-hanging fruit, you know. Um, the optimum oxygen level on the bottling line, we feel, is to get as close to zero as possible, you know. And that's not always the case. Certainly when you look at closure selection, zero is not necessarily the best. You have micro-oxygenation. What's the best level of oxygen in that case? Barrel aging, you're contributing oxygen on purpose, fermentation, et cetera. So those areas, uh, let's say require a significant level of research and understanding in order to determine what the optimum level is. In the case of bottling, we're shooting for zero. And solutions, generally speaking, are mechanical in nature. It's good engineering. Not saying they're always easy, but, but certainly um, they're relatively easy uh, to implement uh, corrective measures. And of course, the impact of bottling on wine quality and wine consistency or wine consistency can be um, very profound and, and last, but certainly not least, it's really hard to get serious about optimizing other winemaking steps, like closure selection, for example, before we take on bottling and bring it under better control. Okay, so I mentioned this, uh, this uh, bottling study that we'll be uh, conducting. I'm not gonna cut Stefan's grass. He's gonna go into a, a lot more detail around that, but the types of things that we'll be looking at is kind of getting a, um, a pulse check on the state of the industry, if you will, and depending on the number of wineries that participate, the first phase of that study will really be benchmarking. What is the current state in terms of wineries and operation of their bottling processes, if you will? So we'll be looking at measuring dissolved oxygen at various stages, headspace oxygen, looking at TPOs and such. The next stage, which is a really important stage, is based on those findings, we'll be implementing best practices and solutions to try to improve control. And ultimately, we'll be assessing um, what the impact of all this is on wine quality with the hope and the expectation that we're going to see improvements as we implement improvements in bottling line operation. Um, OK, so that's really it for the background. Uh, as I mentioned, we have a pretty full agenda today. This is just kind of a, a summary of that. You know, We've got five technical presentations um, from five great speakers. I think with some very rich content. Um, we're going to then form a little bit of a round table. We thought instead of just throwing out a, a Q&A that uh, we'd ask some industry experts to come up and join us here. Uh, so we'll have a discussion, you know. Um, I'm guessing we're going to get to that at around 3.30 or so. Um, and then we're going to wrap up with a wine tasting. And again, we try to do that at the end of these uh, seminars where just to show you the influence of oxygen transfer rate through a closure and how that can impact 
uh, the sensory development of wine. It's usually pretty interesting if you haven't participated in that. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, I want to uh, just introduce our speakers. Um, then I'll call upon our first speaker. So um, we have Anna Gret Cantu, and Anna Gret is assistant uh, specialist with the Department of uh, Viticulture and Enology with the University of uh, Davis, um, who's been a very strong academic partner to us in our, in our uh, oxygen management research right from the very beginning. Um, Anna Gret is going to be talking about post, excuse me, bottling and post bottling challenges based on their experience with the their research winery. Um, our next speaker comes to us from industry, John Cunningham. John's a director of process improvement and innovation at, uh, at G3. Um, and John's going to talk about headspace and nerding and their experiences from, well, a commercial adventure perspective. Yeah. Um, then it's over to Jean-Baptiste Duval. Jean, Jean is our application development manager based um, out of Nîmes, France. That's our headquarters for oxygen management research, and Jean's going to talk about actually CO2 management um, at bottling and after bottling. And then we'll turn it over to another one of our academic partners, Dr. Hind uh, Lateus, best I could do, <laughs> assistant professor of enology um, with the Department of Viniculture and Enology at uh, Fresno State University. And Hind is going to talk about the impact of bottling on wine quality and last, um, but certainly not least, um, our own uh, Dr. Stefan Videl, who's our Global Director of Enology and uh, also based at uh, Nîmes. And Stefan is really going to go deep into this industry bottling study and, uh, that I mentioned before and uh, where we want to go with this whole thing. So um, that's the program. And as I say, it will be time challenge. We're going to try and keep the speakers to 25 minutes each. Um, Really, you know, in light of the fact we have the round table afterwards, we'd like to keep, uh, keep questions to the end, but if you have a pressing need to ask one, and, uh, then go for it. You know? but, but let's do it at the end of the talk and not during the talk so that speakers have a chance to work through their material. Okay, so I think that's it for my introduction. Um, with that, I am going to, whoops, I'm going to turn it over to Anna Gret, and uh, she'll take it from there. Thank you. Thank you. You know what you're doing? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> cool.